All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, those who came after them say, Lord, forgive, forgive our sins and the sins of our brothers who believed before us, and leave no malice in our hearts towards those who believe. Lord, you are truly compassionate and merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that our master Prophet Muhammad is his votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the day of judgment. The Almighty Allah chooses from among his servants those who devote themselves to serve his religion. The Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that the best of Muslim communities are the companions, then their successors, then their successors. Companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, My generation is the best people, then those next to them, then those next to them. Those are the ones who are described as the best. They carried knowledge and protected it against extremism and ignorance. Allah has praised those people and mentioned them in the same category of the messengers, of the messengers companions, promising them paradise as Allah the Almighty said, Allah will be well pleased with the first immigrants and helpers and those who followed them in good deeds, and they will be well pleased with him. He has prepared gardens graced with flowing streams for them, there to remain forever. That's the supreme triumph. The Tabi'un or the followers of the companions are the closest generation to the Prophet as they are the second generation after the companions, and the followers of the Tabi'in are the next generation to the Tabi'in. May Allah be pleased with them all. May Allah have mercy with Al-Imam Al-Busayri who said, and all of them obtained from the bounties of the Messenger of Allah, like a handful of water from the ocean or a sap from continuous rains, the Tabi'un had accompanied the, pro the companions and learned from them, and the companions have witnessed to their virtues and knowledge. For example, Abdullah ibn Omar witnessed in favor of Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, saying, by Allah, he is a mufti. He also said, ask Sa'id al-Musayyib, for he has learned from the religious, from the righteous people. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib used to give fatwas, in the presence of the companions. Ata ibn Abi Rabah used to give fatwas for the people of Mecca after the death of great scholars for Muslim Ummah, Abdullah ibn Abbas. When Ibn Omar arrived in Mecca and people gathered to ask him, he commented, Do you collect your questions to ask me while you have Ata ibn Rabah amongst you? The Tabi'un were known for the sincerity of their love for the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. For example, Al Hassan al Basri, whenever he reported the hadith of the trunk of date that moaned off in love for the Prophet, he used to weep and say, O servants of Allah, a piece of wood moaned out of love for the Prophet, peace be upon him. You are more deserving to yearn for meeting him. Also, Imam Malik once was asked, when did you learn from Ayyub as -Sikhtani? He said, he performed Hajj twice and I used to see him without hearing him. Notably, when he would mention the name of the Prophet peace be upon him, he used to weep. Their reverence for the Prophet peace be upon him was so great that they never talked about him except in the best way and at, the be at their best conditions. Abu Salma al-Khuzai Abu Salma al-Khuzai said, when Imam Malik ibn Anas used to report the hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him, he would make wudu, both on his best clothes and comb his beard. He was asked about that and he replied, I pay reverence to the hadith of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. There were some tabi'un whom the Prophet, peace be upon him, praised like Uwais al-Qarni, who was so kind to his mother. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told his companions that his supplications are answered by Allah. 
Omar ibn al-Khattab said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, the best among the tabi'un is a man called Wais ibn Amr. He had been suffering from leprosy. His treatment with his mother would have been very kind. Ask him to beg forgiveness for you from Allah. When Omar ibn al-Khattab met him, he asked him to ask forgiveness for Allah for him. That's for Omar. The Tab'un learned from the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, the genuine meaning of the religion. Once, Imam al-Hasan al-Basri was asked, Are you a believer? He replied, Belief is of two kinds. If you are asking me about belief in Allah, His angels, scriptures, messenger, paradise and resurrection, then I am a believer. But if you are asking me about the words of the Almighty Allah, True believers are those whose hearts tremble with awe when Allah is mentioned, whose faith increases when His revelations are recited to them, then I do not know whether or not I am one of them. Al-Bayhaqi commented, Al-Hasan did not doubt his basic belief, rather he doubted the perfection of his belief for which Allah has, par for which Allah has promised paradise in his saying, they have high standing with their Lord, forgiveness and generous provision. They also realized the value of facilitation and applied it in their life. Sufyan al-Thawri said, In our view, knowledge entails issuing legal concessions, that's ruchas. As for being strict, anyone can do that. Al-Azraq ibn Qais also said, Once we were at Al-Ahwaz, Abu Barza al-Aslami was praying, but his horse ran away. He stopped his prayer to catch the horse, and then came to make up his prayer. A man said, look at the man who stopped his prayer for the sake of his horse. When Abu Barza finished his prayer, he said, my house is far, and if I lose my horse, I shall never, it shall never return home. He learned that from the Prophet, peace be upon him, who used to choose the easier option whenever he was given an option between two things as long as the easier one was not sinful moreover the prophet peace be upon him said <coughs> make things easy and do not make them difficult cheer people up by conveying glad tidings to them and do not repulse them the prophet peace be upon him also said Whenever forbearance is added to something, it adorns it, and whenever it's withdrawn from something, it leaves it defective. They also practically apply the values of mercy, solidarity, and feeling with others in their life. Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, used to secretly give out charity to the poor, with nobody noticed that. When he died, they lost he who used to provide them with money. When performing this ritual ablution for him, they found the signs of carrying sacks to the widows and orphan houses. Thus, they realized that he was the person who used, who used to, keep, to come to them at night with provision. It is, it is said that he was in charge of a hundred of the Medina's houses, as he used to provide them with their provision. Showing mercy to each other was not confined to Muslims only, but rather extended to non-Muslims. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah be pleased with him, once wrote to his ruler over Basra, search for the people with whom we have covenants, who became aged, weak, or unable to get their own living, and make for them a due share from the treasury house. In, do in doing so, Omar ibn al-Khattab May Allah be pleased with him. Followed the example. Uh, in doing so, uh, Omar ibn al Aziz, may Allah be pleased with him, followed the example of his master, Omar ibn al Khattab, who, upon seeing a man from the people of the book asking people for charity, said, I swear to Allah, we have not treated this man fairly if we take jizya from him while young and leave him now. So, Allah be pleased with him, imposed for him a due share from the treasury house. 
The same also was done by Khalid ibn al-Walid, may Allah be pleased with him, who, upon concluding the treaty with the people of Hira, he said, I decree that whenever one of their aged became unable to work or is afflicted with a disease or turns poor after richness, that he should have a due share from the Muslim treasury house. Mercy, furthermore, is not confined to man only, but rather extended that to include animals, birds, etc. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz once wrote to his ruler over Egypt, recommending him to show mercy to camels, saying, I was told that there are camels in Egypt that are forced to carry a, a thousand pounds. So, upon receiving my message, do not load them with more than 600 pounds. He also recommended that they should be shown mercy and not be humiliated or beaten. He, was, he has actually learned this from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who once recommended his companions, saying, Don't you fear about Allah about this beast which Allah has given in your possession? It has complained, complained to me that you keep it hungry and load it heavily, which fatigues it. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is a votary and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and ho whoever follows their guidance to the Day of Judgment. Muslim brothers, one of the most distinctive characteristics of the followers is tolerance with people and dealing with them kindly. They were very lenient when dealing with people. Qatada is reported to have said, We have got into the house of Al Hassan al Basri in a visit. He was asleep. Beside his head there was a basket full of bread and fruit. So we pulled it and started eating. He then got up and was happy. He smiled and recited the saying of Allah Most High, or from the house of your friend. There is no claim upon you whether you eat together or separately. In the same connection, Jarir ibn Hazm, may Allah be pleased with him, said, We paid a visit to Al Hassan. We stayed there until it was midday. His son then came and said, Let the old man take some rest, for you have caused him a lot of troubles. Whereupon Al Hassan said, Leave him. For I swear by Allah, there is nothing more beloved to me than seeing them. The list of their characteristics also include self-denial, appreciation of and respect for scholars, and showcasing how Islam is deeply entrenched in their souls. This may actually be a lesson to those who talk about the matters of religion without knowledge. Thus they get astray and get others astray. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Allah does not take away the knowledge but by taking it away from the hearts of the people, but takes it away by the death of the religious learned men. Till when none of the religious learned men remains, people will take as their leaders ignorant persons who, who when consulted, will give them verdict without knowledge. So they will go astray and will lead people astray. The followers were, were also very modest and of great ability to understand the matters of the Sharia. The incident of Imam al Shafi'i with his student Yunus ibn Abd al Ala is a case in point. It is narrated that one day Yunus was angry with his t teacher al Shafi'i. When the night fell, Yunus heard some knocks at the door. He asked, Who is that? A Shafi replied, Muhammad ibn Idris. Yunus said that he thought of any person with the name of Muhammad ibn Idris, but not a Shafi. He then opened the door and found Imam Shafi before him, saying, Oh Yunus, we agree on hundreds of topics and are separated because of one. Oh Yunus, don't try to be victorious in all controversies for something gaining hearts is more important than gaining in a particular situation 
Oh, you must don't destroy all the bridges you built, for one day you might be in need of them to go back. Oh, you must always hate the wrong, but do not hate the wrong door. Keep away from the acts of disobedience, but be tolerant and show mercy to the disobedient. O Yunus, criticize the speech, but show respect to the speaker, because our task is eradicate the disease, not the ill. <clears throat> our honorable scholars followed this way and were thus the best example for us in carrying the trust of the religion of Islam correctly, understanding it, acting upon its moral and kindly, delivering it to people with wisdom and good instruction. O oh Allah, make us from those who listen to speech and follow the best of it. Those are the ones Allah has guided and those are the people of understanding.